Oh, we don't have the music playing. Okay. Welcome to Banner Bunch. Uh, we're recording this session, so occasionally you'll see me go up to the top and do that, but that won't be visible in the YouTube video. That's just for us. Um, well, here's new. Just okay. <laughs> Welcome. So we have a standard schedule uh, jammed up for these. We have new introductions, so you can put names to faces for our banner team. Uh, and then we'll talk about our topic. This month we're doing employee self-service, which is awesome. It's kind of relevant right now. Uh, should go pretty quick though, uh, about 20 minutes I figure. And then we'll have an open forum. The rest of the hour is available to you guys for any questions you have, uh, for as long as you want to keep us here. Uh, we do have to be out by 10 o'clock because there's another training going on in here after. Oh, but actually the training's with us anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are the Banner Bunch. We're the Applications and Systems Programming Team. Uh, Kim Damon is here. Mark, Tyler, Teresa is sitting back with you guys. She's our plant. <laughs> Lori, Carl, uh, Lena is our Administrative Ninja. She's back in the office right now. Catherine, uh, I'm Gabriel Williams. I manage the team. And then our CIO, Michael Kleiner, likes to join us for these, too. So, uh, as I dive into this, uh, last year we did a similar training, and I did a little bit of a spiel about what Banner is and what self-service is, just to make sure we're all on the same page here. Uh, who knows the difference between IMB and SSB? Who knows, who knows what those acronyms even mean? All right, cool. Uh, I'll explain them. These are acronyms that our team uses, and basically they're just two different uh, ways you can get to the information in Banner. Banners are a massive database that serves most of the functions in the institution between registration and admissions and uh, grading and academic transcripts, but then it also handles human resource functions, finance functions. Uh, there's a lot of functionality in this tool, uh, and Banners, it's developed by a company named Elucian, and it's, it's a world-class product. It, it serves the needs of massive institutions like Oregon State and even bigger, or community colleges like us, or even smaller institutions. Uh, but being in a database, you can put all your information in there, but you need to be able to get to it. And we have two different ways you can get to your information in Banner, and it serves two different populations or two different functions across campus. IMB, or Internet Native Banner, is the one that we're most familiar with in our uh, administrative functions. I'll show you what that looks like. This screen. Who's familiar with this? Who's been into Banner? A lot of us come in here uh, to do our day to day work. This screen is very functional. It is very administrative. It is where we go in and we actually put in the data or manipulate data or kick off processes for whatever we're working on. Uh, it is not intuitive. It is a skilled system. You have to have training to know how to use this. But on the other hand, it's also crazy functional. There's a lot of power in this system right here. That's not what we're gonna talk about today. We're going to talk about SSB, or self-service banner. Here on our campus, we refer to it as WebRunner. And WebRunner is just our branding here at Lynn Becky. If you go to any other banner school, they don't call it WebRunner. They call it self-service, or MyOSU, or whatever else. Um, this kit functionality looks at the same information that's in our database that IMD does. It's just a different view. And this view is meant for people that have no training, like our students. You uh, wouldn't expect them to go through a whole bunch of training to be able to register. They should be able to just log in here, and it's, for the most part, intuitive. Uh, there's a lot of functionality in here, but most of it's just view only, or you can change one thing like your address. We have areas in here that we currently license for uh, general, which is just personal information, like your address and your, your uh, phone number when you text you and that sort of thing. Uh, students, we have a whole section in there for students where they register and can see their records and pay their bills. We have an area for faculty advisors. 
we have an area for financial aid, we have an area for employee self-service, and that's what we'll talk through today. Uh, and we also have another one we call Web Tailor, but that's mostly for the folks on this side of the room. That's what we use to control that for the look and feel of this interface. So we go back to our slides. So I want to make sure I covered all these. Uh, so that's basically the difference. IMB versus self-service. They're both banner, but they're two different ways to get to the information. Any questions about that? Awesome. All right, so we're gonna go through employee self-service. Uh, inside banner, I'm gonna be in our development instance with a test person, so it's not real information. Uh, but we should be able to see everything in there and use the functionality. Um, let me see here, I've got an ID. I was just in here a minute ago. You need to just reset your pins. <laughs> Wouldn't that be embarrassing for you? Uh, yeah. um, oh, I'm in Devo. Yeah. I'm in the wrong instance. All right, let me try this again. <laughs> so much for this being smooth. There we go. Now I'm in. So you can see that this person has access to general self service, student self service, financial aid, and employee. They, they have several different roles across our campus. An employee, I'm just going to kind of run down through these. Uh, feel free to stop me any time and ask questions. Uh, if I don't know the answer to it, which sometimes is going to be the case, I uh, can always refer to HR, but I don't see any HR faces in the room, so we may not have all the answers. But this is where you're going to go as an employee for the institution. Uh, if you're set up and you get a paycheck from us, you should be able to see this tab and all this information in here. Benefits and deductions is a fairly light area of self-service, mainly because we use uh, OEB and American Fidelity to manage a lot of our benefits and deductions. There is a little bit in here that, that's useful to you. Uh, benefits enrollment, there's no functionality in here turned on because we go through OEB, OEB but you can click this link and it'll take you directly there. Uh, I think open enrollment is, what, August through October? Yeah. Middle of September. Middle of September. September. Yeah, I know it starts September. in August. September. Yeah. September. But if, you, if you're confused on where to go for your open enrollment, you can always drill through this to that link. Mm -hmm. Beneficiaries and dependents. Um, a lot of people only see one person here, but if you have a spouse or a partner or, or children or other people that depend on you and you've got them set up for your insurance, then you would see them here as well. You can see a lot of information about them, like their socios, their relationships, birth dates, um, whether or not they're active. If our, our statistician just noticed I gave the same birthday to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is test information. Um, there's some functionality in here that may draw your eye, like add a new person, but this doesn't work. Don't add a new person here. If you want to add a new person, you talk to HR. So what's the member type? You know? Member types? Let's go back there. It's both or none, and I don't know what that means. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but you can see information here, is what I want you to take away from this. You can see who your beneficiaries and dependents are, and you can eyeball whether or not the information is correct. And if it's not, you go through HR, you go through your DJ or the front desk there, and they'll be able to help you. If you have any changes you need to make with this to add or remove somebody or whatnot, then you would go through HR. The other piece of this is the benefit summary, and this, I apologize for because it is not intuitive. So the first part is you have a date drop down menu here to get past, and it says current. And so pick current. 
<laughs> and hit select. But then we get to more real meaty information about your benefits. You can see uh, information about your department or what category you are in the system and, and what dates apply to you. But there's also these links across the bottom to give you more information about your retirement plans or your health insurance or debt deductibles and whatnot. Uh, some people have more than one in these and you can get some summary information at the top or you can drill down into your history if you've had changes over time. Or you can look at contributions. You'll see this date range feature as we go through several different areas. What it's going to do is you're going to choose what range of information you want to look at. If you want to look at just the month of January, you would just choose January. If you want to look at say just the months of December, you choose both. And the reason I say that is because if you choose one month, you'll see one month's worth of information. But if you put in a range here, um, in some places it'll just give you a sum. Other places it may break it out. You want to be careful when you're looking at that, but you may be looking at something that you think is wildly high, but you've actually included several months into the sum. And that benefit summary works across all the different areas. Health benefits, you can see your flex spending accounts and your monthly deductions. You can look at miscellaneous information like when you do classified employee and you have used. Any questions about benefits and deductions? All right. Pay information. This is probably one of the more uh, common places people are going to go. Usually people are going to print off their pay stub. Uh, I know that I, I bought a house recently and I had to print off three months worth of pay stubs. I just went here and printed them off and handed them to Wells Fargo. Uh, that functionality is here along with a few other things. You can look at your earnings history. And again, you've got our pay range here. Uh, you can look at just one month. And it'll show my hours and my regular pay and what I earned out of that. And again, you can drill down to some of these and see more information. Uh, it might be helpful if I add a few more months here. So you can see what the pay was over time and then a total. For a pay stub, you would choose a year, and if you were here for multiple years, you can see any year that we have information on going back. And then you can see a summary of your gross and net pay and when the pay period was. And then if you wanted to, you can drill into one. And this is where you're gonna see a lot of your information about a pay stub. And this is pretty much what it's gonna look like when you go to print it. You'd see it broken down into employee contributions, employer contributions, year to date numbers. Uh, everything that goes into and out of your paycheck is displayed here and available. At the very bottom of it, you can actually get a printer-friendly version that comes out nicely on landscape paper, uh, or you can print a PDF and send that PDF to whoever needs this information or save it for your own records. I have a good luck printing. It was like over three pages. But the printer version? Yeah. I haven't tried it in a couple of years because it was so crummy. Give it a try. So it doesn't matter if you're wrong or whatever you're in. Yeah. Well, and sometimes your printer, once you've changed a setting for printing one thing, that setting stays until you change it again. So I know there's been times where I've changed something to be a single-sided printing, oh, yeah. and all of a sudden everything becomes single-sided. So you may have to adjust to get the settings as you're yeah, trying to Here's right. to make it go to several pages because you've got so many zeros on there. <laughs> <laughs> They're all behind the desk. <laughs> and again, you also have links where you can get to some of the other areas. We kind of go back and forth across this. And then you watch these links at the top or bottom of the page. Sorry, I, had, I accidentally closed the window and I had to drill back. I'm glad the conversation kept going. You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> You can look at your deductions, very similar to other areas that we've just seen. You can display, these are the sums for all of those areas, because I chose a six month time range. And you can drill into them and see a little bit more granular information.
And then you can see earnings by position. This is really only going to be useful for people that have transferred across the institution into many different roles over the years. Uh, this test person only has one, one position right there. And you would just see the summary of some of their information. If you have more than one, then you'd be able to track kind of the changes that have happened over time with that position. Any questions about the pay information? It's pretty self-explanatory. Is that where we were just looking? Is that where you find out how many hours of leave time you earn each month? Nope. No. Leave balance is where oh, you go for okay. that. And we'll get to that at the end that. here okay. because we'll probably have a good, lively discussion about how it's how it displays information. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next area is tax forms. This is relevant right now. Everybody should be getting their W 2s and starting to file their taxes unless you put it off till April, like me. Um, first thing I want to point out here, it's not the first link, but I want to make sure everybody knows that there's a electronic regulatory consent. What this means is, this is how you can control whether you get your W-2 electronically. The minute the data is available, you can log into WebRun and it'll print it off. Or if you don't have these checked, you're saying, I want it mailed to my mailbox and I want to wait and I want to deal with that. I highly encourage everybody to check this checkbox. <coughs> so you can get it electronically. 1095s aren't as important because we go through American Fidelity for our ACA reporting, how much of the 1095 is. Uh, but I recommend you check both of these. And I'll show you what it looks like if you don't have those checked. Mm -hmm. So W4s, your employee withholdings. This is where you can see how many allowances you have or your filing status. Uh, you cannot change this. Right here, if you want to change it, go to HR. Talk to DJ at the front desk. But you can print off a W-4 if you wanted to. Nice functionality. I don't know if I've ever had to print off a W-4, but you can. What I'm more concerned with is W-2s. Like I said, taxes are going on right now. But the thing is, right now, it's not going to show me any W-2 information uh, for two reasons. One, this is a test instance, and our W-2s haven't been processed here yet. But if you had, because I don't have that checkbox checked, what you would get is a warning saying you haven't consented to getting your information here. Please go check that checkbox. In which case you would go back to. Actually, I I uh, I did this with my son just last night because my son uh, works part time for the foundation. He makes enough money to buy a few tacos, and um, <laughs> and and we went in and he hadn't selected hadn't selected the authorization and it actually took it right into that. It'll take you right there when you say okay. When you say okay, it takes you there, you check the buttons, and then it takes you back and you turn it in. And then so, what happens is once you've been sent to get it electronically, then you can see your W4 the way we print, and there's a printer friendly button the same way you just saw the W4s. Once you get it electronically, can you uncheck it? Absolutely. You can change that at any time. And you can change it daily if you really want to. Um, the only time it's really going to matter is the day that HR prints off all the W-2s, which was uh, last Friday, last Thursday or Friday, we printed off all our W-2s. So if you had a check before that, you won't get a mail. You won't get uh, your W-2 in the mail. Uh, if you didn't have a check, then you probably have already gotten it. I like to get mine electronic, personally. I don't like to have that information sit down in the mailbox. Um, W-2 corrected information, I don't know how often we deal with corrected W-2s here, but if we had one, that's where you would go to get it. And then 1095, like I said, American Fidelity handles all our ACA reporting, and so I don't think this really provides any functionality for us. Not currently. Job summary, not a lot in here. Uh, if you had a lot of positions across the campus, then you'd see a big list and the dates that those were effective. You can click into each one of those and see you know, this is the date that I was hired, this is the date that something happened. You know, on July 1st, almost everybody sees an increase, that sort of thing. And then leave balances. This is where you're really curious. Leave balances is unique. Um, and I have difficulty explaining this sometimes. Uh, yes, sometimes I have to even ask HR myself on is this information accurate? Because there's a lot of misnomers in here. It really depends 
on where in the process HR is at. Because we turn in our timesheets on the 15th that has all of our leave that we've taken in the past month. And then they have two weeks that it takes to process that and get that information in the system. And then it would show up here. So if you go in here on the 14th of the month or even the 20th of the month, this information may be old and not updated to what you just turned in on your timesheet. So what I use to figure out where they are or where it is, is the sick leave balance, the sick leave um, earn. Because I know that everybody gets, I get eight hours every month. So that 48 hours of earn means that if you divide eight into 48, you've got six months that it's been out here. So this is as of mm -hmm. July through. Right. I tend to focus on these two numbers again. This is how much I currently have available. And then I've got a mental note or an Excel spreadsheet where I kind of keep track of all the leave that I've taken since the last time I turned in the timesheet. And then I can do the math. Uh, like everywhere else, you can actually see the granularity of this. You can see months where you've taken sick leave and months where you've earned it and how much that's gone over time. Uh, but this is probably an area where if you have a question or you're not sure of this number, talk to HR. Uh, because they will be able to tell you exactly how much you have today and pretty quickly. Does that answer your questions about leave? And yeah, I it? didn't realize that I needed to click on that blue word. Yeah, and that would give click on the link money. and that shows you your question was how much do I get every, every month? month? And then you can show right. there. Because it used to be they just tell you June 30th, you're going to have 230 hours. Oh no, I better use 30 hours or I'll lose it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm used to, but they changed it now. You've got to do computations to determine, um, make sure you don't lose any of Right, and here the rule is you have to keep it under 200 at June 30th. If you go over 200 at June 30th, then they sweep the top. And right? you've got to make sure hours. that you're counting the hours you will accrue. Yes. Between now and June, yeah. Yes, so it's what you have now minus what you've taken plus what you are accruing will be what you Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I said, this these calculations can be really confusing. That's that's normal. Just talk to HR if you're not sure where you're at, or planning ahead, or any of that. So that really covers all the functionality of employee self service, and you can see a lot of information here. Uh, you can you have a couple of places where you can control whether you get things electronically or not. You can put things off, uh, but if you want to make changes to this, or if you have questions to this. You want to call the HR department. You need to go to the front desk or talk to Sandra or EG or anybody in there. And they're more than happy to help you out. Uh, I like working with them. Any questions on this functionality here? Employee self service. When does the employee chat usually show up after someone is hired? I don't know. It depends on how fast the uh, HR processes whatever they process. Because I had somebody um, ask, they started January 9th, but they're a few weeks on the term, we still haven't seen my employees back. That seems a lot longer than I would expect. I think they hadn't been paid yet, probably, so yeah. I'm sure they haven't now because they haven't passed it yet. And that's the sort of thing that if I wasn't seen, if I felt I was an employee here and I didn't see that employee tap, I would ask the HR to make sure things were kosher. <laughs> 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 I'll find you my paycheck at the end. <laughs> just move your desk to the basement. And this functionality, again, all points back to the information in Banner. So if your Banner considers you an employee, you'll have this tab. Uh, another thing I can point out is that once you become an employee, you'll always have this tab, even after you've been terminated or you quit. You should probably put that in the other order. Uh, this tab will stay there, so you can always go back and see your pay histories and pay stubs and click off. Can we get the keyboard employee access to that money? After we're doing yeah. what you do for a student. Mm -hmm. yeah, your access should stay active. Okay. Any other questions? Are you going to show like the uh, direct deposit stuff? Right. Does everybody know where to do direct deposit? It's, it's, it's so very so obvious here. <laughs> <laughs> direct deposit's actually under personal information. Um, we have these three links where you can set up direct deposit authorizations. One is for your wages, your pay checks at the end of the month. 
One's for reimbursements like travel and whatnot. And then the other one's for students, uh, students that get financial aid checks or refunds or whatever else. <clears throat> These three links are, are uh, net new to our system. They're direct to deposit functionality that we've built here at LBCC. Uh, part of our baseline project, we looked at these and, and determined that Banner 9, the next version of Banner, has everything that we've built and more. So when we make that switch over within the next year or so, we'll be sunsetting this information and turning on the direct deposit information for Banner 9 to baseline, but we'll let you guys all know when that's happening and what that's going to look like. Uh, for right now, if you want to control your direct deposit stuff, this is where you go. It's not, uh, I would expect it to be underemployed, but it's not under personal information or student. So this is where you go for direct deposit. And in there you have all sorts of abilities to be able to add accounts, split up paychecks by percentages, and uh, the functionality we do have is real nice. So do new employees no longer have to fill all these forms out and go to HR that can do it all online now? I don't know. <laughs> That's a great question for HR. I just had this experience. You are a new employee. And you were. because using direct deposit for your pay is a condition of employment, they make sure you do it the first day or so mm -hmm. in their office, not online. Yeah. At that point, you can change your bank account data through this. Mm -hmm. It makes it really slick because they don't limit how many you can do. And it used to be when they did it manually, you had a sheet and there were like two or three that you could do. You can go out there and set up as many as you want, activate them, and inactivate them as often as you want. Choose the dollar amount you want to go to, <coughs> change it the next month, change it back the third month. Um, then you have a, a net button that allows you to, if you put $50 here and 100 there and 300 there and 200 in another, there's a net that allows you to take all the rest of it and go to the checking account or whatever. Really slick, really nice. Mm -hmm. Other questions? That's a great thing. Too. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So we have savings to do about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having to do the legwork. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. I would go with an assumption that when we migrate over to XE, mm -hmm. that if we set things up as yeah, for direct deposit ahead of time, they will. Transfer over. Mm -hmm. We won't know that until. Well, right now, all that information is loading directly into Banner and baseline places. Okay. We've just built our own front end. Okay. Uh, that'll be obsolete when nine gets here. Um, there's other features that are going to be really nice in employee self-service when Banner nine gets here, and we'll start rolling that out. Uh, one is there's going to be an employee profile page at the very beginning that's going to have most of this functionality on one page rather than kind of split up to a million different links. I'm really looking forward to that. If, if you guys are ever just, uh, curious about Banner 9, I'm more than happy to show all sorts of screenshots and salesy videos until we have something that we can poke and, and test with. Other questions? So we're about halfway through our hour. Uh, we've got another 20 minutes or so. We can answer any questions you have about anything. It doesn't have to be about employee self service at this point. Or you can have comments or suggestions for us. Uh, Bernie's got her hand up. When you, you refer to Banner 9 and you refer to XP, explain. That's, <laughs> uh, that's something I mean, the same we're going to start. Uh, it used to be, once it's like branding from Lucian, what it is. For years, they've referred to their next version of Banner as XE. And it stands for extensibility. It's like referred to the four Gs on your phone. It really doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, it's more philosophy than a brand, than a model number. Uh, but recently they've stopped using XE and they're going to just Banner 9. We use 9 and XE interchangeably. Right now we're on Banner 8. When we say XE or 9, we really need the next version of Banner. Uh, the nice thing about Banner 9 is that we're going to be able to roll out pieces of it at a time. We're not going to have to slam dunk the whole system at once. We're going to be able to touch pieces of self-service in a controlled manner and roll out one feature at a time and that sort of thing. Uh, same with the IMD side of things. We'll be able to roll out what they call transformations. They actually didn't change any functionality yet in Banner 9, but what they've done is change the look and feel of it. 
And what's really going to be nice is that with Banner 9, IMB and SSB kind of referring to it that way becomes obsolete because it's all going to look the same. And when you log in with one login and you go to the same place and it's all in one place. It's really nice. And it also looks like it's from this decade. And it won't be browser dependent, so you won't have to worry about your job updates and that sort of stuff, at least not for Banner. And our plan for Banner 9, it really depends on uh, infrastructure right now. Mark's hard at work at uh, a couple of tools that we have to have in place before we can turn on our first piece of Banner 9. Uh, we have an Elucian Solution Manager, we call it ESM. That's going to be our product that helps us maintain the system and keep it all in place and keep it secure and accessible and updated. And then we also need single sign-on on this campus. We don't have a, a single sign-on. Does anyone know what single sign-on is? It's where you log in once and then your credentials carry from system to system. You don't have to put in a new password when you go to Google or DegreeWorks. Uh, we have to have it for Banner because if we don't turn it on, every time you click on a different link in self-service, you'll have another login. And then we just call it you know, it set our office on fire. <laughs> um, we're going to have to have single sign on turn on on campus at least for Banner before we roll out Banner. Uh, another piece is a piece we call admin pages, but we'll we'll talk about that more going forward. What that does is it allows us to, uh, I mean, application navigator that allows us to run Banner and Banner Nine together. Uh, but it should be pretty seamless to use. How long has Banner 9 been out there running? Have people been using it? Parts of Banner 9? Before Sam left. Yeah, Parts of Banner 9 have been actually available since SunGuard and Datatel turned into Elucia about four or five years ago. But they really started to invest in it over the past maybe two years. Uh, for anybody that goes out to the Elucian Hub, you can actually download an XE guide that shows all the different applications that are available. I can actually go out there right now. Uh, open up another tab here. There we go. If I go out to Lucian support and click on my Lucian hub, I don't know what it is. It's much faster. Go ahead and log in there. Give the XC guide. Good. So I'll pull that in. Now it's a better than I got to change. That's <laughs> <laughs> Uh, out here in our hub, everybody knows this, right? If you've never seen the Lucian Hub or, or not logged in here, I highly recommend you go get a login and come in here. Because this is where all our information about Banner is at. And you can request the Banner 9 guide. And out here we can see <coughs> all the different pieces that are currently available for Banner 9. Uh, all these available apps, as they're calling them. So right now, Banner 9, we can we have registration available to us, we have faculty grade entry, attendance tracking, uh, the student profile and employee profile that I was talking about earlier, event management, which in Banner 8 isn't really worth anybody's time, but in Banner 9 it's worth everybody's time to at least look at. Um, position description, finance pieces, HR pieces, um, the student administration pieces, direct cause that we were talking about. Communication management, which is gives us functionality around building comp plans out of Banner. In Banner 8, we have that functionality, but it's, it's a little technical. It's hard to set up and maintain. Banner 9 adds a lot of features uh, that give us more control of the look and feel of communications that come out of Banner, as well as when they go out and if they go out and how they go out. I have a question about why do we have to log in? Have a username and login for us, but basically sales, right? They're just telling us about the product. What what else? What else is going on here? Oh, this is where you, you mean the Lucian Hub. This is where you go for your support. So they want to know that you oh. are actually are an employee of the college if you're going out and trying to look at the college. Oh, there's oh. cases out here, mm -hmm. and there's um, what's that thing? Articles right. that are out here, so you go get all <coughs> kinds of information. There's oh. e communities that's out here for you, where you can stuff. actually talk to people across the world. Anybody that remembers Frank Abney, you know, he pops up out there often for where he's for at. Sure. So there's lots and lots of awesome good information out here for you. If you have a challenge, you can't figure out how to do something, you can go out there and say, Hey, how did you guys do this? And you can do that. Okay. So it's definitely not 
just sales? What we go to is not sales at all. Oh, okay, very good. Yeah, this is support, like Kimmy was saying, and, and really all they're doing is making sure that you're an employee of an education institution. If When you go to sign up for an account, let me go back there and see if I can bring it up. I'll probably have to sign out of you, Carl. Um, If you don't have a hub account yet, when you come out here to that, that first sign up page, there's sign up for a hub account. And really all it's going to ask you for is an email address and make sure you're not a robot. And what happens is I get an email and they say, does this person work here? And I say yes, and then you get it. It's really pretty painless. And then your little boxes, you got to see like nine boxes come up on the boxes log in. Yeah, you would have a couple. And then if you needed something more, you would request something else. There's a, a tab there that you can request tabs. So there's lots of stuff. And I highly recommend anybody that uses Banner or works on campus, get a hub account because this is really valuable to you. These are all ones I either have access to or can get access to. Right. When you first go in there, you won't have any little, little boxes. The two that you really want are the support center and the e-communities. E-communities always gets. Those e-communities always get. You always get communities and then request apps. Mm -hmm. And the difference between those two, support center, uh, like Kimmy was saying, it has a ton of functionality, but it's a little technical. This is what we use to get our documentation for Banner. Uh, this is what we use to start an action line or set up a case with a Lucian. Something's not working the way I expect. I need an expert to come look at it. Uh, or if we find defects, this is where we put them up. We can also ping a Lucian for, hey, here's a feature I think would be awesome. And other members of the community can say, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's try to make that into a feature. Uh, the other side that I highly recommend, where is it at, is the e-communities. And this is probably the most relevant for you guys. E-communities is basically a massive global forum. Everybody that's participating in this is either a moderator at a Lucian side responding to questions or people like you that work at institutions around the world that have just quick questions about Banner or want to have a discussion about features or whatever else. Um, when you're in here, you can start a discussion, you can start polls, you can do all sorts of things. Most people will use these discussions. But you can also search. Like I think the first time I came out here with uh, an HR person, I searched for ACA. They were having trouble setting up ACA. And I said, "Well, you asked anyone?" And we typed in literally three letters, ACA, and hit enter, and their answer was in the top three links. It was amazing. So this person asked, you know, "We'd like to have a monthly ACA checklist. How do other institutions do this?" And other other institutions responded and said, "This is how we do it at." East Florida University or Illinois or wherever else. Um, this is becoming a very vibrant community. There's a lot of people participating out here. It's kind of like any other social networking. The more people put into it, the more everyone's going to get out of it. So I, I highly recommend everybody do this. And you can see other people like this person, David Lauer from Central New Mexico Community College, asked this question. And you can respond directly to him. You can share files. You can do whatever you're, you want to do. We use this daily. I'm, I'm in here every day. Um, and we've got several success stories across campus, like that ACA question, or Kevin's in here quite a bit asking questions and getting a lot of good answers for finance. Or, uh, you have an error that comes up that you haven't seen before. You can go mm -hmm. copy paste the error out here and ask questions. Yep. You can also set it up so your area will email you each day you can get a digest if you wanted sure. a, a specific yep. area to come to you when there's uh, postings out there. Right. I like the daily digest. That's actually what I read every morning when I come into work is my daily digest from the communities because I subscribe to all the areas mm -hmm. and I can see what's going on in financial aid or this new update came out and it's got a huge bug. Don't, don't install it or this is how we, uh, I had a question about AccuPlace for test scores and how people are loading them across the you know, different institutions. They gave me a couple of great ideas I hadn't thought of before. I think I told her to give one to I think you sent that, sent that to me, yeah. Danny sent me a couple of these the other day. 
So e-communities and the support center are highly valuable. Uh, not something you're required to use, but I highly recommend it. It's a great resource. Oh, man, it's, it's awesome. Other questions? Sign card work is something that's odd. <laughs> 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 okay, but I have a question. Sure. I know in the past, when we get those little pop-ups that update your Java, mm -hmm. we've gotten emails and don't do it yet. So poor Teresa, I call her each time it pops up and says, okay, yay or nay. <laughs> let, let, me, let me give you the definitive answer on that. If your computer says update Java, update your Java. Uh, we want to keep everybody up to date because that keeps us secure. Uh, if there's a reason not to update your Java, Mark will send out a fiery email to everyone screaming, like, wait, stop, don't do it, pull the plug. And more than likely, we'll be working with Russ to make sure you can get that. So, if you get a sorry, Teresa, I want to call me. You can ask yeah. Teresa. I'm sure she loves to talk to you. Thank you for checking, though, because yeah. if you're not sure, I, I mean, I go run to our guys all the time. Also, when things pop up, if you're not mm -hmm. sure, I, I would rather err on the side of, you know, asking a question that has already been yes. answered once or twice before than. I'd love to make that point too. Okay. That's what we're here for us for those questions. If you're unsure, ask. I don't like them, Jack. And besides, if you don't call trees, so <laughs> her feelings are going to be hurt. Uh -huh. So yeah, no one's going to scold you for that. Oh, Jack! <laughs> Jack's not sitting up here, <laughs> and he never will be. <laughs> Here's the other thing: is I, I update the information on my homepage fairly regularly, especially when it comes to things like the Java updates and weird stuff that could be happening. It's going to affect mm -hmm. everybody who's going to be using Banner. Um, you can update your Java through us if you're not sure that something coming over the wire on the internet is telling you go ahead and do it and you don't trust it or you don't know. You can call or you go to the banner homepage and mm -hmm. do it. There's a neck there, and actually, the first thing is this thing. Yeah. I'm going to just go to one of these. Well, that's not that's not where, it's that. not that's where you go. No, it's down at the bottom. That's not, no, it's not. The, <laughs> we'll, we'll see that in a second. Go back to the yeah. okay. <laughs> it's hard to do that. That's the most my phone. Scroll down. Okay. Out there's, of there's, 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 there's a page here Please that call. I that I wrote. Please call <laughs> Teresa <laughs> <laughs> if you need help. But this will take you to a page that kind of explains step by step how to do that. From mm -hmm. yeah, there it is. Um, I'd also like to point out also, that there's yeah, a ton of information on this banner homepage, not just update your job. Right. But also, okay, now go ahead and start what you're going to do. Go, you mean, you go to a different version? Yeah. Yeah. When you fire up banner in the first place, you should all get. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, of course, you to my job. I just saw <laughs> <saw> the <laughs> later. Job of Say later. <laughs> Say later. <laughs> and then scroll down. Uh, Go, go down, to just minimize that. Yeah. Scroll down and then scroll oh, down. The other way to do this too is at the very okay. bottom. That's here, what I would grab. <laughs> this is a location that we have on our servers here on campus. And if you take this whole thing, copy and paste it, copy and paste it into Windows Explorer, you will automatically download it and get it going for you. Right. Right. That's not Windows Explorer. No, <laughs> also known as file manager on Windows 10. I want to show this in the. So click in any blank spot there and just paste it. It can copy it. It should still be there. But it doesn't have the double slash. It's good. See what happens. We'll need it. Oh, you might. I don't think you copied the whole thing because it went oh, right yeah, on the screen. You do need the double slash. What this is going to do is it's going to go out to our yeah, yeah, and and that it run. It's going to go out to our server and pull it down and run it for you and update your job automatically. And again, you can always ask for it. You should go ahead and do that. that this machine, machine needs to be updated. Needs to be updated so. I don't want to affect the recording or anything, so we'll update into that. Yeah. Other questions? That's what we get a lot. We have lots of ways to update Java. 
Well, it's about 10 to, so we're actually running out of time. Uh, we're always available. If you have questions or if you need additional training or uh, we're starting to visit other areas like we're at the, the Lebanon Center and we'd like to visit the Benton Center in the future. But I'm always up for just coming to a specific area and just giving you a mini bear or bunch or something like that if we need to do trainings. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities for trainings here. Uh, the other thing I'd like to ask is if anybody here has suggestions for future band options, I'd love to hear your suggestions because we're always wondering what we're going to do the next one. That will probably be our conversation on Monday is what are we going to do for March? <laughs> uh, so if you have any suggestions, let us know. <coughs> Otherwise, thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs>